Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever Sciences Po Columbia University Dual BA Program Reunion. My name is Vincent Wesselman. I am from Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm a proud member of the Dual BA class of 2021. Like many of you, I arrived at GS after two exciting years at Sciences Po. As a student from the Le Havre campus, I fondly remember our campus-wide Diwali and Chinese New Year celebrations, walks along the beach no matter how windy the weather, and the countless potluck dinners that taught me the value of friendship and, more importantly, friendships with people who are fantastic cooks. I'm so grateful to have gotten to know students from the other Sciences Po campuses during my time at Columbia, and I'm happy to invite you all today to our discussion between Dean Stephanie Baum of Sciences Po and Dean Lisa Rosenmetsch of the Columbia University School of General Studies. After the discussion, we will have a chance to reunite and meet new members of the dual BA alumni community in breakout rooms. And I look forward to seeing you all there after what I'm sure will be a fascinating reflection on the last 10 years of the Sciences Po dual BA program. Dean Baum has been the program director of Sciences Po's research group of law, justice, and society in China since 2006, and is the scientific advisor for the China and East Asia concentration. She was a visiting professor at the Columbia University School of Law in 2014, and has also been both a visiting professor and research associate at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Baum obtained her PhD from Sciences Po Paris in 2000, and completed her postdoc position at Hong Kong Baptist University in 2001. She obtained her qualification as PhD supervisor and full professor under the academic French system from Sciences Po School of Law in 2016, and is one of the leading experts on Sino-French relations. She is among the founding members and now serves as vice president of the European China Law Studies Association based in Hamburg as well, and has been a consultant for international organizations and think tanks such as UNDP, the European Union, and World Bank. Welcome, Dean Baum. Dr. Lisa Rosenmetsch is the ninth Dean of the School of General Studies. Previously, she was the Chair and Professor of Sociomedical Sciences at the Mailman School of Public Health and is an internationally recognized scholar in the prevention of HIV among populations with substance use disorders. For the past two decades, Dr. Rosenmetsch's research program has been continuously funded by the National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. She was one of the early researchers in the era of antiretroviral therapy to articulate the importance of creating prevention and primary care programs for people living with HIV. Her landmark research has resulted in more than 200 peer-reviewed publications and has helped shape national policy and intervention programs. Welcome, Dr. Lisa Rosen-Metsch. So without further ado, I will let Safia take over as moderator and lead us into this exciting discussion. Thank you so much, Vincent, for that introduction. I am incredibly honored to be here moderating this conversation. So first, I want to thank everybody for coming. It's going to be an exciting talk. And I'd also like to take a quick moment to introduce myself. So I'm Safia, born and raised in New York. And like Vincent, I'm also a proud member of the dual BA program between Sciences Po and Columbia. So after high school, I wasn't incredibly excited by any university program I found. So I decided to take a gap year and move to Jordan to work with the United Nations doing refugee work. And while there I stumbled across the dual BA program and absolutely fell in love. Um, and as a recent graduate, I cannot express how deeply I miss my time at Sciences Po in Montant, where I got to take classes focused on the Middle East and the South of France with some of the most incredible people I've ever met, as well as my time at Columbia, just 20 minutes from where I am now, taking classes under esteemed professionals. And I'm very excited now to continue into the Columbia family because I loved it so much. I will be continuing my time um, at Columbia, going to Columbia Law School to continue my work with human rights. And so I'm super proud to be here, to be talking to all of you and to get to know a little more about this program that has shaped me so thoroughly. So let's dive right into the questions. I'm very excited. Thank you, Dean Rosenmetsch and Dean Baum for being here with us today. It's going to be an exciting time. So um, 
As a beneficiary of this program myself, I'm curious as to the institutional philosophy that created this beautiful partnership between Columbia School of General Studies and Sciences Po. Would you guys like to speak to this? I, I can start, um, Stephanie, and, and, I, and I want to start by channeling in our beloved Dean Peter On and Francis and Sian's Poe and some of the amazing people that started um, this program. And um, I, I, I think as you all know, I had the honor of uh, joining Columbia School of General Studies as Dean in January 2018. In my first um, semester, two months in, I had that great honor to visit uh, students, many of you who were in the class of 21 um, were in your, I believe, uh, second semester at that time in, in the Sans Po um, program attending all the campuses. So I, but I can say that um, in my first year as Dean, where I had the great honor to spend a lot of time with, uh, with Dean on, I got to, and Francis, and I got to hear a lot about that history. So I'm going to share what I have, what's been, uh, brought down to me and then and then Dean Baum I'm sure has perspective too. So I would say for um Sian's Po at the time when this program was was developed was much more advanced in, in terms of undergraduate institutions in international education. And uh, this was a time when many institutions in the United States were figuring out what higher education in the international space would look like. President Lee Bollinger, um, probably a year or two before this program um, was launched in 2010, had set out the global centers. And I know many of you are at our, um, at our program, um, at our global center uh, in France at Reed Hall. So greetings to you that are, that are there. Um, and he wanted to think about Columbia University's role, not uh, other universities such as NYU, as on the other side of, of New York City, created and programs actually like where you would you go to a campus and you take um, programs in different countries and you were NYU students. And I think Columbia wanted to look at this very differently, working in, in particular countries where we were working in, with partner institutions. And so the Sian's Poldul degree program came really with that thought, with that kind of model, um, looking for the best universities in the world. And Sian's Po for, for Columbia was truly, you know, as, as everyone knows here, the premier social science university, certainly in Europe and, and in the world. And so that partnership started. Um, there, there was a lot of collaborations already in place at Columbia University Large. And the idea was really to create this new model for undergraduate education that um, would be immersive, completely collaborative, and designed to uh, recruit the most brilliant, courageous students to engage in the world, um, to be able to, to train in two places, immerse themselves in, in, the, in the culture, in the language, in the universities. And that's really how, um, how many things got started. Uh, many of you know I'm a, a graduate of Columbia School of General Studies first joint program with the Jewish Seminary. So we had this template in place, but this is very, very different in, in doing this internationally where you now as our alum, and thank you all for joining us today, you represent 436 graduates of the dual degree program from Columbia University in Sciences Po, which is amazing. This is the first year where we now have more graduates than we have students. And uh, we, we could not be more excited, more thrilled. And it's it's been a true partnership um, throughout. And you will and you are, have the, uh, the great uh, privilege and honor to be graduates of both universities. So I will stop there and uh, let Dean Baum also add, but again, it's a very exciting day to be having this event and we hope to have many, many more. Thank you, Dean Rosenberg, and thank you, Sophia. I'm, you know, it's always so, we're always so happy when we hear that students are truly happy 
um, in the program that they have chosen because we, we do work hard for you and it means a lot to us. So thank you so much. And, and I have to tell you, you might, you might consider that it's a little bizarre to have a piano behind me and it doesn't look like I'm on a Sciences Po campus. But I have to say it's, it's because we still live under the curfew. So I guess the first idea is because our programs are very challenging, intellectually very challenging. And so we need absolutely to have a very diverse cohort. We need the students to learn from each other. And so uh, we, I think the intellectual diversity, the social diversity, the different, the diversity in our pedagogical, you know, uh, 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 in the way we teach to the students. So all this diversity is needed to meet up with the level of the uh, intellectual challenges of this double degree. And so, um, and the other idea, I guess, it's maybe more from a European perspective, the notion of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Liberal Arts, which actually is a European idea that has been exported to the US sometimes in history and which, you know, made its come back, coming back in Europe at the end of the 20th century, the idea was to basically um, to join again a very old tradition of liberal arts, meaning giving the opportunities to students after the high school and before the master to choose what they want to study in a very free way. And this is uh, these, you know, um, sort, of, sort of intellectual challenge in itself has been lost in Europe for many years. And so the way for us to, you know, to go back to this whole tradition was to do it with a key partner and a great partner of us, which was Colombia. And I guess uh, another idea is to make sure that our students will be agile students, resilient, not people thinking that what they have learned somewhere is the best way or the only way to learn, but really to be agile and to go from one system to another one. So I, again, I think, um, and I do say, Sian's Po, I think, was was way ahead of us um, in, in just because they had done so much more in international education. For us and, and working with Sian's Po, it was really testing this new model. Um, we believed deeply in it at the time, but it was new. So there were lots of things um, that had to be put together. Um, Jessica Sals Disnick, who can raise her hand there, is, is on the call. And she was, she was part of the original team. How do we do admission decisions together? These were some of the priorities, Safia, was some of the basics, right? We were, this was the first one. And now, as, as you know, we, we, we have more um, international dual degree programs. I'm not sure, and Dean Baum can correct if I, I don't believe that Columbia was the first, but you can share, you know, I, I think, uh, but I think Sian's Po had already some, so we learned a lot from them. Um, how do you manage a student body that is of both institutions? We wanted to, right from the beginning, have the students, you, you first arrived. In, in France and you're there for two years. And so, you know, um, Dean on did this. I followed in terms of always being there, sending our advisors over. And then, you know, when you spend the two years at Columbia, you're very connected. We've been at each other's graduation ceremonies. It was working at how the faculty can work together. And, and I know one of the things you wanted to talk about is what's next. And that's something we always talk about wanting to do better and deepen is having, you know, we have many faculty at Columbia that study in France, many faculty as, as, as Dean Baum had done, you know, who study, at, who, who are professors at Columbia, how we can have our students engage, you know, back and forth. So our priority was really making the best program for students who are interested in engaging in the world and who have a focus and passion for the social sciences. We allow students to take any major. I, I'd say, you know, the most popular majors that at Columbia tend to be economics, political science, history, human rights, you know, ones that do map really very well with Sciences Po. But again, we've had our students, um, some of you are on the phone, on the Zoom today who've, who've been pre-med, who have done other, other things. And, you know, we very much um, wanted to, to really set it up. And I, I know maybe, we, I, I think you also want to talk about the future, but maybe we could just talk about, let Dean Baum also speak about the priorities 10 years ago, Safi, and then you can lead us as, as you deem appropriate. Perfect. Well, I guess 10 years ago, the priority was to make it. 
to be able to to manage to make it and 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 there were a lot a lot of difficulties uh, very technical administrative difficulties you know from the visa issue to the students to be able to enroll them to be able to uh, together to select the students so i think the, this was really the basic so it was a wonderful idea but quite tricky to really to to implement but i i have to say um the Probably the DNA of the dual degree never changed, doesn't change, and is still the same it's to really provide the excellence, to provide excellency, really to make sure that we select the best students. What, what, what do we mean by the best, best students? Not only from, I would say, uh, you know, a grading perspective, looking at the GPAs, uh, but also selecting uh, talents, students who want to study, who really are eager to study who are eager to challenge, to be, you know, to go out from their comfort zone and, and to challenge us. And they, and they do challenge, challenge us for sure. So I would say recruiting the best students and um, giving you the opportunity to train by the best uh, professors and really also to keep on transforming our curriculum. Uh, at, at, at threat asked me to join the team was to implement a very you know reform of of our uh, undergraduate studies curriculum uh, and we we completely transformed it uh, we transformed it with uh, you know with now we have majors we have a civic engaged pro, uh, civic learning program uh, we have a completely different year study, uh, different study abroad i mean some part of it that uh, you know because um, as as a science school former science school student you, you know that so basically we have um, and also we 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 have we wanted to focus we want and wanted recently to focus a lot on climate change issues, social societal issues. Um, so because it, and the world is changing and because we are a social sciences university, therefore the content of our curriculum need to change. So your question, basically, I would say, um, and, and I don't want to, I would love to talk about the, 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 you know, the future and what are the different plans, but I would say the, the core ID program, which is basically selecting the best what is the most update you know type of curriculum um, to make sure that you will be um, uh, I would say a solid uh, citizen to face the challenges of 21st century uh, with a double culture with two countries two institutions two alum alumni I mean alumni networks uh, um, and to make you stronger to face, uh, you know, again, all the challenges that we are, we are facing. This is really still the DNA of the double degree. Thank you. It sounds like it's been an incredible journey for this program. It's very interesting for me to hear about. So with all of that in mind, what's, what does the next decade look like for the next, for the dual BA? What are the next steps? Um, Dean Rosamanch, do you want to start? Sure, sure. So the one thing that I will say that is definitely part of the next decade is, is directly related to everyone on the call, which is really engaging our alumni community. And it's so exciting now with, uh, again, having said 436 graduates, and we will work very closely with Sian's Po to engage, you know, you are a student's alum now of, of uh, both, both universities, and that will be a really major priority to, um, to, to work with you to, you know, to set up. I, I know on our um, alumni board, we have a recent alumni committee, we have, um, we have representation from Sian's Po. Um, right now on our board of our school, we have a parent, representative, but we, we very much hope uh, to, to really engage you. So that's that's one thing that will be very much new. I think as, as, as Dean Baum has said, you know, the DNA of the program, the, the, the core elements, I think will remain the same. Um, we certainly want to get more faculty involvement at, at both at both universities. Um, we want to continue to um, recruit, you know, and to admit the most passionate, ambitious, creative students. I, I do just want to put in a, a quick, you know, a, a quick 
two a couple of just things about students when they had when you graduate from Columbia. I think you all know this that you know our students do remarkably well at Columbia. I will say I, I tried to get the median GPA as a statistics, but I, I and I don't have that, but I do know that our past analyses have shown that our students in the dual degree program with Sciences Po in Columbia outperform other undergraduate students both at Columbia College and the rest of GS. I mean, our, our Sciences Po dual degrees represent about a fourth of, of the, uh, actually one fourth of Sciences Po Columbia graduates have been inducted into Phi Beta Kappa since the start of the program. Almost half of Sciences Po graduates have been inducted into the GS Honor Society. So, you know, we want to continue um, to be able to, again, recruit the best students. We want to try to offer more scholarships, all of these things things are, are, are really key. Um, but again, um, I, I think the, the main parts of the program, we're always thinking of innovative ideas. Um, Dean Sarah Ede is on the call and maybe she can wave. I, I, I believe she's on the call and she's come up with some ideas of a reflective practice process, which would kind of give an idea of BA students to reflect on things like civic and individual responsibility and community engagement and global awareness. We're always working together with Sian's Po to again, make make the program is, is amazing and fantastic. So generations to come will have that experience. So, so yeah, do you want me to add something to, to Dean Rosamond? Yes, if you would like to also talk about the next decade for the program, that would be incredible to expand on anything. And if we can move on to the next question, if, if you feel like that's good. Okay. Fine, so we're going to brainstorm all together. It's nice, you know, we didn't have the time to brainstorm with, with Lisa on this very important topic. We expect to do it a little, you know, um, later during the semester, at the end of the semester. But what I would say very, uh, you know, uh, very spontaneously, um, and is just to add what uh, Dean Rosemet have said, because I, I, I fully agree on everything. So maybe opening to new campuses, so we, you know, as you know, we have seven different campuses uh, at the Collège Universitaire, and it's it's not that every single uh, campus of, of the Collège, uh, you know, are are you know are eligible to the double degree program with Columbia. So question mark maybe opening to one, and I have an idea on this. Uh, I let you I let you guess. Another one is definitely our faculties, because we um, we have a bottom approach uh, here. Well, basically, we uh, we recruit you. We recruit the students. We we train the students, and and then we would like you know that these absolutely uh, uh, rich experience. We would like very much that it has an impact on faculty exchanges and and ideally on research. So you know making so it would be nice to see that our students, common students, help us make a link between teaching and research. That would be really my, and, and we have some ideas with it. We call them globe courses or global courses, capacity of co-teaching classes in between our faculties. And that would be wonderful. Another idea that I have is recently we have launched uh, our very first uh, Bachelor of Arts and Sciences. We've launched two, you know, uh, yeah, basically two Bachelor of Arts and Sciences, and we are launching two more in September. And, and probably one in 2023. And so it makes me think that the question of science and linking natural sciences and social sciences is extremely important because as we study social sciences, we do contribute to a better understanding of many of the core issues that we need to deal with, which are very natural sciences, sciences based. And so I would like to make sure that our dual degree uh, students also are part of this adventure of the interdisciplinary between natural and social sciences. And, and maybe the last but not least of a very long, you know, uh, list of items that I might have in, in, in mind is our civic learning program or parcours civic, you know, in French, parcours civic, civic learning program. It has been, it was silly for, for, for Sciences Po to, uh, to, to launch this idea of uh, a sort of mandatory civic learning program because it's it's not it was not in the DNA of Sciences Po. It's truly very far from a sort of traditional French way of conceiving citizenship, and we are shaping something completely revolutionary here. And I was one. I'm wondering whether we would at least 
you know, give a lot of value and to the work done by uh, students through the service of their civic learning programs to, to let, you know, how can we value basically this work? How can we, you know, work better and more together on the civic learning program aspect? Um, because you are students, but you're also citizens slash students and it makes, may, means a lot to us. So uh, I would, I would just, you know, uh, stop here and just saying about these three, four ideas. Wonderful, thank you. And now I would like to just pose a quick final question before we open it up into the audience, which is talking about the impact of COVID-19 on international education. After the past year, I imagine there's a lot to say on it. So please, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Dean Baum, would you like to start this time? Dean Rosenbach. Oh, sh sure, sure. So in terms of, you were asking about international um, students in this period. So this period has been very, very tough, I think, for everybody. And I think that, you know, the faculties, I, I know at Columbia and I'm, I know at Sciences Po, I think did the best that they could in terms of, um, in terms of being able to adapt and to, to, you know, I mean, I think last spring was really the toughest period when we had to quickly, quickly go to to Zoom and to do classes. And I think it got better as um, as we went along. And, you know, there was there's some very heartbreaking um, parts of everything with students not always being able to uh, to be to be present, um, you know, when they wanted to on campus, of course. And but I, but I will say one one important thing that we learned was for students to um, that were very resilient and I think I think made the best out of a very difficult situation. Definitely. Dean Baum. Um, such, such I would say. Um, I, I truly agree with Dean Rosenach. Uh, we were amazed to, to witness the capacity of students to be resilient. And this is, uh, and they've, I think they have learned a lot. We have learned a lot all together. It has been difficult, very, very difficult. And I have, um, I have uh, really, um, I would say, a particular thought for some of our students who've lost their parents and uh, I don't know around, digital table here, but I have really a particular, you know, friendly spot for them. So, on to your question, I would say, yes, what is at stake for us is the level of internationalization of our programs, our educational program, and it's in danger. Um, you know, it's, it's, it hasn't been difficult, it has been quite difficult for units around the world realize this student's perspective and including students and professors, you know, uh, basically organizing the curriculum so that it is international, international enough, meaning that it's comparative, meaning that it's not the French perspective or the European perspective, but we really try to have a kaleidoscopic perspective on issues today. It took us quite a long time. It's part of our, you know, career basically. Uh, and, and is this in danger because of the COVID-19? So there are so many images of international, of, uh, you know, of, um, I mean, international education is very important and needs to be protected. So um, I would say um, I'm, I'm quite cautious and I hope that the uh, young students will realize that it's very important to have an international experience uh, in their studies, uh, first of all. Um, and I really also think that it's, it, sh it showed the importance of universities, the importance of education, the importance, and what does that mean, education, and what is the core dimension of our work. I think around the table here, and I'm sure I share this with uh, Dean Rosenmetsch, 
we have chosen to be professors. This is a job we like. We are extremely happy to. And the, the, more, the more it goes, and the more I love my job. And the reason is why, because we love to transmit. We love to exchange. We love to learn from our students. And we can do it digitally, the same way that we have a very happy event here. But it's one part of the um, you know, experience. The other part of the experience is that universities are located in one place. It's quite sacred. It's physically sacred and it's a place of exchanges and debates. And we all miss that a lot. And we are more than happy that starting in September, normally, hopefully, we'll be back to this um, situation, but really enriched by the fact that it missed us so much. So, you know, I think it will have a very particular taste in September when we are all back and we can have in our amphitheater students in front of us. And, uh, and I'm sure the students who love the screens and love, because you belong to a generation of, uh, you know, digital devices, you will be also the first generation to really be happy to be back on track in real universities, physically speaking. I definitely agree. So now I would love to kick it off to the audience. See if anybody has any questions, you can just drop it in the chat. And thank you so much, as Aviva just added, to the deans for talking to us today. We really, really appreciate it. So one question from Hannah. What is a specific milestone or highlight for the dual degree program in the last decade that you look back upon fondly? I, I can start one thing. We are incredibly proud that we have two Rhodes Scholars from this program. So I, I would say that is one incredible milestone. <laughs> Dean Baum, anything that comes to mind? Um, well, I'm thinking, um, um, I would say, Spontaneously is de definitely maybe not the most, I mean, I have many, many things that I could say, but I would say, I, I would say that uh, in, on the Reims campus, we have um, a library uh, named after Peter Own, and we launched, organized a very solemn uh, event in Reims, um, it was, I think, two years ago. And it, we gathered together many people that were at the beginning of this dual degree program and the launching of the, the dual degree program. And what the students during this moment, you know, this event, what they said about Peter Owen, what they said about how Colombia was dear to them, uh, what it meant, you know, uh, to, to have had, the, you know, the great, uh, the happiness to have known Peter Owen. This is something that I will never forget. Yeah. And, and I would just add, it's, it's really what makes this program of the students or all of you as our alum. I think it's a very exciting time that we now have 436 graduates. Um, the students that we admit are just, you know, stellar and amazing and, and just, um, I just think it's, it's what each of you are going on to do with your lives to make a better world, to to be innovative, you you were in many ways pioneers in this amazing uh, program, and I, I I think I hope I mean I would love I don't know Safia and Vincent if there's time you know for for besides asking us questions just to you know give people a chance to speak about the program would would be amazing if if there was that opportunity. Yes, and just as a quick note, our breakout rooms are a good chance for us where we will all be in there talking about our experiences. So you can ask us any of that if you're in our breakout rooms. Um, and one more question is, what is something incoming students to Columbia and Sciences Po should be looking forward to next year? Um, I, I, I can start and, and I'll say a few things just also the, the way the two institutions are growing. So um, for Columbia, like we are gonna be launching a new climate school. So that's gonna be something that I know that's a big interest in a lot of our students. Sustainable development has also been one of the big majors. We, you heard um, Dean Baum talk about um, 
climate, and that is such a key area. Um, we are going to have a new major in climate science at Columbia University. So that's really very, very exciting. Um, I, just, I, I'm just gonna mention a few things on Columbia. We also are gonna have a new building for the arts and sciences and, and departments of uh, African-American and African diaspora studies will be moving in there um, as well as uh, psychology and statistics. And so I think, and I think again, what we spoke about earlier about looking in the future to have more faculty events and um, that will, and faculty working together will be for the purpose of enriching the dual degree program. And, uh, you know, right now I think we're all coming out of COVID. So, so I think that, I think a big thing we look forward to is just being in person. I mean, it, it may sound simple and basic, but I think those from the class of, you know, 21, um, you know, who spent unfortunately most of their time at Columbia, not being, you know, in the classroom, um, on campus, you know, know how much that means. So uh, I think there is going to be a lot in store for our students. You're making me sad that I graduated. <laughs> I'm missing all this apparently. Yeah. Well, I have to say, same for us. Sometimes we would like to be students instead of being professors because the more our curriculum, you know, improve, the more we'd love to be the students. Well, I would say, um, quite a lot of things on our part, including exactly uh, on you know on the same same sort of ideas as uh, Lisa and Rosenmet, Jean Rosenmet have just mentioned. We're going to launch two certificate programs. Uh, uh, each certificate will allow students to pursue a course of study. Um, first one to channel the study of gender equity. So gender equity that will be proposed for, on, on the different seven different campuses uh, on, at the Collège Universitaire. So there is one certificate on gender equity and another certificate on blue ecological transition. We call it uh, la transition bleue, the blue ecological transition. So basically it's transformation connected to oceans. So we've decided to really focus on the ocean and that will be available on three campuses only. And the students um, from the dual degree will be able to, um, you know, uh, enroll in this program on Le Havre uh, and Monton. Uh, and then we are pre preparing for next uh, academic year and a certificate on, you know, general ecological transition. So uh, I would say this. And the second thing is we have uh, also invented during the COVID-19 crisis um, a new opportunity for students, which is a research internship. So uh, we have uh, opened about a hundred uh, opportunities for students uh, to do an internship, an internship, sorry, an internship within one of our labs at Sciences Po. And we will definitely continue this experience because it has been extremely important. So I would say both on ecological transition and also in making a link between an experience as, of, as a student's uh, learning experience and linking it to an experience of research intern is something that we would like to continue. This new focus or uh, continued focus on environmental issues between both of the schools, I think is super inspiring and important right now. So it's very cool to hear about. And then one final question um, is specifically for Jean Baum is what are the new majors and fields of study for the new Bachelor of Science degrees? For the science degree. Oh, actually, uh, when we talk about majors or majeur, you know, we have three majors. One is political humanities, economy and society and politics and government. These three majors are for the whole, oh, I mean, every single student, whether they have enrolled in the Bachelor of Arts of Sciences or the regular bachelor, right? So, uh, but the thing is uh, currently the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences is in French only, and we hope to be able to open it to English in, on the Reims campus. And this is something I would like to, uh, you know, to talk to with um, Dean Rosenmetz when possible. So to imagine whether in one year time or in two years time, some of our dual degree per, uh, students uh, would be able to enroll to these Bachelor of Arts and Sciences. But to reply to the question of one of our alumni, actually, um, it doesn't make any difference whether you are, you enroll in the Basque, we call it Bachelor of Arts and Sciences, or regular bachelor, 
you definitely choose uh, three of the majors uh, provided by the, uh, the Collège Universitaire. Now, the focus on the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences is very interesting, is very much focused on uh, environmental uh, issues. So uh, it's, it's a combination of the six social science disciplines taught at the Collège Universitaire, and we combine it with math, physics, uh, natural sciences, and it's not, uh, it's very particular because it's not a, a bachelor uh, presenting two silos. There actually are many different courses uh, completely combined in between social sciences and, and natural sciences. And so we have an approach through discipline, but also through research problematics. For example, just an example, we have a class called identity. And this class is taught by six different professors coming from six different disciplines, biology, uh, law, uh, history, physics, and they give their own understanding and perspective from their, from their disciplines on what identity means. So it's a completely new way of thinking, which is a disciplinary approach and a research problematic approach. And this definitely will have an impact on the general bachelor. Uh, degree afterwards. So I would love really to have an exchange and we will do so with uh, Dean Rosenmatch and, and see what we can do uh, to let the dual degree students uh, be part of this experience. Sounds great. Wonderful. Okay, so thank you for your responses. Now we are going to be opening up breakout rooms for our peers and everybody to talk more about the experiences with the program. So you'll see the little breakout room become available and it will be assigned, so watch out. And thank you again to Dean Rosenmetsch and Dean Baum for talking to us today. It's been an incredible conversation and I'm excited to continue it in the breakout rooms. So thank you.